You might call Ted Philpot the ultimate late bloomer. After building a thriving ceramics and art clay business across from the Motor Speedway, Ted decided to become a world traveler. What he discovered during his globe trekking became a personal paradise that amazed Indiana school kids. Producer Jim Simmons tells us the story of this 1960s Noah whose ark has since been lost to progress and the wrecking ball. Okay, I know it's not a good idea to be overly nostalgic. Sometimes you gotta move on. But a colorful part of Indy's past just got mowed under to make way for a parking lot, and we take note of it. Now most of you out there never met Ted Philpot, but you passed the successful business he built on 16th Street about a billion times on your way to the greatest spectacle in auto racing. Ted was a pharmacist by trade, a boiler maker by alma mater. In 1919, the front door of his pharmacy swung open and in walked someone from England with a formula for modeling clay from the old Harbutz Plasticine Clay Company and uh, they together organized a company to make modeling clay. If you're wondering what a pharmacist knows about modeling clay, then you didn't know Ted Philpot. He was a lifetime learner and a lifetime, he had a lot of interests. He worked until he was 78. He died almost at his desk, uh, still opening the mail. He was very much an entrepreneur. Clay begat finger paint. Finger paint begat crayons. The line of ceramics took off. An American art clay grew and grew. The company became Ted's life. After we had Sunday dinner, then we would go out, just he and I, every Sunday, to walk around the factory. And after that, we went to Riverside, where I got to ride the ponies. And then we went down the street and there was an ice cream store. Ted was in his mid-70s when he finally felt assured that the wolf was no longer at the door. He and wife Florence took off in search of bigger game. Times were much different in the early 60s and big game was what you sought on safari. Soon the company became festooned with trophies of his travels. Then things changed again. I got a telegram saying to expect two pandas, live pandas. They were lesser pandas, which are a raccoon, you know, they're little lesser pandas. And so we started off with those, and then after that they just started coming. Uh, tigers, uh, lions, uh, cheetahs, uh, leopards, uh, a zebra, two zebra, uh, monkeys, bears. And so by 1965 we had a full-fledged zoo. Well, <laughs> I thought he was nuts, but then... <laughs> And we were all, I at least, and everybody else, I think, was very shocked that he was sending back live animals. Once the initial shock wore off, the employees in American Art Clay took to the project like wildebeests to a watering hole. Jim added feeding the brood to his regular duties of casting crayons. The plant manager was a Kentucky farmer with ideas about how horse-looking critters like zebras should be cared for and handled. Specialists from the just-established Indianapolis Zoo paid house calls. If you're wondering how you sneak a lion or cheetah in off 16th Street, you should know that all the big cats arrived as cubs, born in the wild, bottle-fed in Speedway. We thought, you know, this is really cool. We're doing this. We're sitting here with these cubs in our laps, bottle-feeding them. And uh, where would you ever get to do that? The best known were Jack and Jill. This happy couple gave birth to several letters that were sent to zoos around the country. With Jack and Jill, every day was an adventure. And we didn't realize someone every day pulled up one of the guillotine doors. And both lions came out. You know? And there was nothing between them and downtown Speedway. <laughs> and, and so I, uh, I, I put my arms around the female Jill. And the other guy who was there grabbed Jack, you know. And suddenly I realized, what in the world am I doing? <laughs> the private zoo stayed open until 1966, giving tours to busloads of school kids who could see both how crayons were manufactured and go on mini safari all in a single outing. Ted Philpot passed away that year. His beloved animals all found good homes, most of them winding up at an Indianapolis zoo that was at last ready to receive them. An American art clay, a happier ending still. 
Today, from its new headquarters on Guyon Road, Amoco still hosts a gallery for you to tour, only these creatures are made of contemporary ceramics. With the aid of computer technology, the company supplies clays, glazes, kilns, stoneware, potter's wheels, and other supplies to both novice and established artists around the world. And so ends the amazing adventure of the American Art Clay Building on 16th Street. And what would Ted Philpot think of his personal Noah's Ark that brought so many smiles to Hoosier children? He kept his uh, pharmacist license till the day he died, just in case things didn't work out. <laughs>